that might be a good transition to one justice who's saying it's time to take on big tech. And that would be Justice Thomas. He's saying it again for the second time. And it's a beautiful thing. This was the video I actually wanted to do today until I saw the police state that Canada was. And I wanted to go see how bad it was. Um, so Clarence Thomas, in another concurring opinion, basically is, again, laying out the groundwork as to how to challenge Section 230 or the issues arising from it. So I got, I mean, I got a lot of questions because he, he, laid, the, he laid four basic, four prongs of attack, so to speak, or four arguments. Uh, common carrier, utilities, uh, Section 230. What was the third one, Robert? And the fourth one? I mean, yeah, well, basically, we, well, if, the, if you're of a common carrier, a public accommodation, a common carrier exception, a public accommodation exception, a, uh, the, the, the third aspect was government coercion. So he basically gave a shout out to Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s suit uh, that's pending in, in the federal courts in California, which is based entirely on that that the Facebook was coerced by the state to suppress uh, his organization related to uh, the lockdown issues. And then fourth, it's in a footnote, and not a lot of people are paying attention to it, but he quotes cites Eugene Volok, who we've uh, done interviews yep. with, uh, who basically suggested that Section 230 is, uh, is unconstitutional because of its preemption, its scope of preemption violates First Amendment for a range of reasons, in, in the in the uh, preempting state law context. And he favorably cites that one, which is going to, it's very interesting. It's going to send a lot of people pursuing that. So what he's saying is, look, it, the, that big tech is much more like, especially he notes when a, a company, an idea that I and some other people have been pushing out there is focus on those aspects of big tech that are big, that have monopoly share. And he basically said when a, a company that has a disproportionate share of something that's of the public space at some level, historically, we've said they do not have a right to exclude. And that's cable companies, phone companies, railroads, transport, so public accommodation. A public accommodation. Is public accommodation this? What's the difference, I should say, between public, public accommodation, accommodation is broad. And, 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 and that's and how we enforce our civil rights rules. That's diners, restaurants, parks, you name it. So that that's very expansive. So his point is that we often say that your First Amendment rights when you're doing something that's in the public benefit to the public interest and you're owning some part of the public space, that there's limits that you don't, that does not include the right to exclude them. You don't get to exclude them from the train, from the bus, from the taxi, from the, from being able to send a telegram, use the phone, send a fax, um, uh, be able to get cable service. And, uh, uh, and that that's the common carrier context or when you're a restaurant or a hotel, you don't get to exclude there either because you're public. You're open to the public for accommodation. This is a jurisprudential distinction and not a legislative one. Well, yes, in the sense that what? Yes, because what he's saying is pass laws that are look like this. And at least I'll say they're constitutional. So pass a law saying you're regulating them as public accommodation or you're regulating them as a common carrier. There's efforts in Florida and Texas to do precisely that. Uh, or he said, oh, by the way, if you want to bring suit, why don't you challenge Section 230? as either being beyond its original purpose, that was his prior concurrence. Uh, he said, really, Section 230 is being misinterpreted. But also you can say Section 230 doesn't apply because this was really government coercing uh, the action. And he's saying, he's basically sending a shot across the bow to Congress, saying, if you guys keep uh, intimidating big tech to censor, you're going to get big tech sued for being an agent of the state, which is good. And again, the guy that to start this all was Bobby Kennedy Jr. He was the one to pursue this first in a pro high profile case. That's ongoing. Uh, and now he's got a Supreme Court justice concurring opinion in his pocket. And then third, and, and Bobby Kennedy Jr. will be later appearing on sidebar down the road. The uh, And this week will be Allison Morrow will be on Wednesday. This is uh, going to be a good one. That, oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, you know, old conscientious reporter. She's not old, but in the con old conscientious style, old school reporting style. Uh, the uh, uh, she's definitely not old. I don't want her like military husband to be absent. The guy looks like like a super seal. He looks like he's out of the, one of those movies. Like the uh, yeah, you wouldn't you know you just look at him and be like yeah, I'll do whatever he says. But the uh, uh, but also that uh, they can pursue it on the grounds of the of Volok's exception. So I think this it was it was a great roadmap, a, a second roadmap he's given for people to challenge big tech and for legislators to also challenge big tech and hopefully some of them will take him up on it. Now, the, any legislation that would regulate big tech, ha, explain to a schnook like me how it works. It goes state level regulation or would it be federal? Well, level regulation? I mean, you have state laws regulating public accommodation, federal laws too. So it could be state legislators or Congress. It's interesting, actually. So you could have, in theory, 
whether or not you'd expect Congress to do it, given its political leanings, you could have certain states doing it, which would require big tech to uh, be law abiding if they want to conduct business in those states. Yeah. Is the risk that a Facebook would do what it did to Australia and just say what he did is he gave a roadmap for Florida and def Texas to defend their laws and other yeah. states are looking at it, too, because he's saying, one, you have a right to do so as a, as a state, as a public accommodation or a common carrier. Secondly, if they claim Section 230 preempts, look to my prior interpretation of Section 230, but also look to this footnote that says Section 230 can't preempt state law without violating other First Amendment rights. Um, I haven't read Volokh's opinion on that. I, I was actually unaware of it until I saw it, but that was very, very interesting. So he's giving a roadmap to multiple people to take legal action. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, again, it, uh, leave it to Justice Thomas to be the lead on this. It's not a coincidence that uh, he's the one that's the most conscientious about these kind of issues. Fantastic. And uh, Bobby Kennedy, do, do we have any status update on that suit or the... the it, It's uh, motions to dismiss are pending, and I'm sure they're going to be sending this in as... Uh, supplemental authority in their favor. Phenomenal. So the the public accommodations, common carrier, not they're not legislative until they become legislative at some point, state or federal. Uh, state coercion. Is Violating the First Amendment in, in some capacity. I haven't read the interpretation of it, but that's what he basically says. Okay. He says that Section 230 preemption shouldn't be applicable for constitutional reasons. And then, and then government coercion. So use, you know, if you've been subject to censorship by any big tech and it came after any state level actor uh, said said and uh, it said something to encourage them to do so, you now have grounds to sue, uh, at least according to Justice Thomas. Interesting. And I just now noticed, well, I noticed we hit 10,000, 11,000 watching. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you are so inclined. Thumbs down generates the same algorithmic action regardless, but thumbs up make me feel better. Uh, and drop a comment just to explode the comment section right now. The question, okay, so he, he's done it again. Oops, he did it again. Clarence Thomas, the question is going to be what is going to be the case that's going to set this precedent? And what would that precedent look like? I mean, you're gonna you, someone's going to allege political ideological discrimination by big tech, whether or not it's state coursed, um, whether or not it is discriminatory in the common carrier uh, public accommodations, it's going to take a, a, a judgment to basically set the limits of what big tech can do under Section 230. The, the censorship issue will be Bobby Kennedy's case. So Bobby Kennedy's case will pursue that one. And I think on whether they can state law can regulate, probably Florida, maybe Texas, uh, where, where will be the test cases there. So that that's where th these cases will be soon in the court system because of legislation that's passed, at least in Florida, I think in Texas uh, and in and, and some other states, too. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we'll, we'll see this theory tested within a year. Can, can, I just brought this up. Can the chief justice be replaced or substituted for an existing justice? No, uh, only if the chief justice resigns can a, someone else become chief justice. Mm -hmm.